When we separated, I remember Kevin coming to tell me and saying that he wasn't happy and that he, that he wanted to divorce, that he wanted to separate. And I was like, oh my gosh, no, we can do this. We can fix this. And he was already like one foot out the door. And we had this cute little family and I was like, this can't be our story. More life story, take one. We are Kevin and Bree Bailey, and this is our More to Life story. Our story about me coming to know Jesus and my wife coming to know Jesus are two entirely different stories. We were on a path towards destruction, one week away from a finalized divorce, when I stepped into Love Church for the very first time and met Jesus face to face. The first time we told our kids that we were separating was really tough because we were in such different camps. I was like, we're fighting for our marriage, no holds bar. He was like, I'm fighting to get out of this house right now. It was like a death, almost like a death in our family. Something, it was terrible, tragic, but we were trying to have a good face for the kids and say, we still love you. This is, you know, this is just mommy and daddy. And that was really difficult for sure. Once that was done, it was almost like a weight lifted off of my shoulder, but I didn't realize the hole that it was leaving in our family and really the, the desperation of where you were at of really wanting to reconcile this marriage. We were just at such mm -hmm. an early stage in that process that I didn't realize how hard you were gonna lean into fighting for our marriage. You know, I was able to go to a church and hear the gospel and it resonated so much and I needed it, I was desperate. And the message that day was for moms who are tempted to give in and to give up that um, God sees you and that there's purpose in your pain, really. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. You're speaking to me. And I got saved and that was a defining moment where I was like, okay, this is not what I want. This is not where I want our family at, but God, I'm trusting in you to change me into the godly wife that you know I can be because I, I'm failing. As we were going through this, the only time that we would really see one another is when we would transition our children. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. Bree starts sowing these little seeds in my life of like, I forgive you from things from the past that she's bringing up, spending money. We had had a great life before everything looked great on the outside, but on the inside, we were a mess. But she started to ask for forgiveness in these areas where we just weren't aligned beforehand. And I'm like, what is this crazy woman doing? She's asking for forgiveness. Like, I could care less. All I want is this divorce to be finalized. And we sat down at Panera Bread, and that's when we decided that we were gonna start putting our marriage back together. The first thing I looked at her and said was, I'm so sorry for the pain that I've caused our family. And she said, I forgive you. And I'm like, how can she forgive me right now? And of course, we're crying in Panera. Everybody that's around us probably thinks that we're just going through the most <laughs> catastrophic phase ever in our life, which we were. The work that I had done on my heart, that I had got encouragement from others to clean up my heart was the only reason why I was able to say, I forgive you. Yeah. Because that was not a typical response from me from the past. And that was on a Friday. So then that Sunday, I reached out to you and asked if I could come to church with you. Eventually, I show up at Love Church. She tells me it's at Miller North. It's under construction. Walk in the side door. Loud music is blaring. The place is going crazy. And I'm like, I have no idea what I've just walked into, but I'm hearing the gospel message spoken for the very first time. And he's talking about legacy. A man can have everything that he's ever desired before, but still has an empty hole in his heart. And for me, that was Jesus in that moment. So at the very end of the encounter, when they did the altar call, I looked at Bree and I said, I wanna go up there, but I want you to come with me. So I walked forward and left it all at the altar, went home that following Monday and asked the person that was living with me to move out of our apartment. And we started to put our lives back together. We got the opportunity to sit our kids down and let them know that we were gonna begin restoring our marriage by placing God at the center of it. We didn't know what it was gonna look like, but we were gonna lean in and to trust us in the process and that we were gonna start rebuilding our family. And we made Love Church our, our ch church of choice. But really, we, we went all in. We just made that decision that this was gonna be a non-negotiable for us. We knew that we had to stay committed to the process. We knew that we were gonna to continue to show up. And with that, our kids were going to love kids and we were starting to build new relationships. We kept showing up every single Sunday, serving our kids going to love kids, and we just went all in with Love Church. The biggest change that I see in Kevin now is just his humility. He's always been such a good leader and a strong leader and smart and bold. And so I think the the softening of your heart, it's literally in Ezekiel where yep. it talks about a heart of stone to flesh. It couldn't be more true. And just the way that you lead out of humility now, it's so much stronger than it was before. 
and so much more solid. The way that you love everyone around you is so different. Thinking about the woman that she was before we went through this, I mean, I knew that I loved her. One of the things that we say is your spouse should be your best friend. And I always wanted my wife to be my best friend. However, we had just gotten stuck in patterns that didn't align with us being the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But since we've come back together, she's constantly there to serve me. She comes alongside me. She's there to celebrate me, my biggest cheerleader, always in my corner. She's always there to fight with me and work with me and really come alongside me and collaborate with me on every part of our ministry, what we're working on now to help other marriages. We love doing life together and we love seeing people's marriages fully restored. And we wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for Bree putting in the work that she put in to become the woman that she's become today. I walked into Love Church with a broken marriage, with a broken heart, battling so many things that I didn't know what they were. And I don't know who you are today, whether it's alcoholism, mm -hmm. whether it's mental health, whether it's you're on the, the bed of suicide right now, you, there, your life could be in complete disarray and have no idea what's going on. And all you wanna do is get resolution. I tried everything, made money, got promotions, women, everything, and nothing fulfilled the way that Jesus did. So no matter where you're at in your life right now, saying yes to Jesus will only make your life better. I've seen so many broken men specifically walk into Love Church with a cold heart and walk out with a brand new mind and Come a on. brand new heart because of the work that Jesus can do in your life, if you will allow him. So go all in, say yes, take the step of faith, know that there's still gonna be trials, but the path to redemption is solid, it's sure, and you're gonna have a blast going on it. We are Kevin and Bree Bailey, and this is our More to Life story.